I was traveling with a camera and I remember walking by this toy shop on the street which had just so much character to it. So I walked up, snapped a photo and walked away feeling quite satisfied that I got a great photo. When I checked it on my laptop, my heart sank because that photo was blurry. My hands were just too shaky and if you think the photo here looks quite fine actually, that's because this wasn't the way it looked out of camera. This is how the photo was captured. I was able to save this photo in post using Luminar Neo, but I don't think it was that many years ago when the only option was to live with this and feel disappointed that I messed up a perfectly good photo. But describing Luminar Neo as this mistake eraser is actually too weak for how this photo editor is capable of serving your vision. Sometimes you have that final image in your mind, but reality gets in the way. This was on an island, shot from a vantage point with a beautiful view of this lighthouse on that hill, but in reality, this was actually a very foggy day and all I could think of was how incredible this view would look with a dramatic orange sky. So instead of lingering on what could have been, that orange sky I imagined was actually not many clicks away in Luminar Neo. There's a dedicated sky tool built in and something unique about the tools in Luminar Neo is many of them are powered by AI and that includes this very powerful sky tool. I'm going to browse for a sky under the category sunset clouds and let me apply a few and I think I really like the way this second one looks. It's almost unbelievably easy how quick we're able to get a result like this. And you'll notice it's not just a simple mask with an alternative sky, it actually relights the rest of your image to match the new color of the sky. There's a set of controls under the scene relighting tab, which gives you control over how much of the sky affects the rest of your image. I really want to dial in that sunset look, so I'm going to crank this pretty high up let me try it with a bit more saturation. Somewhere halfway looks good and there's no human, so I'll leave Relight Human where it is. And all this intelligently responds to the exact way you choose to position the sky. And that's actually a detail I appreciate the most about Luminar Neo's AI-powered tools. It's very automated in the sense that you get results in one click, but it also exposes a lot of controls that let you drive that result as close to your intentions as possible. For example, here I'm able to fine tune the haziness, the warmth, as well as how bright the sky is. I'll show you with another tool called Atmosphere. And I'm going to simply crank this up to add a bit more fog to the image so it sells the effect a bit more. And with a simple slider control, I can adjust the depth of which the fog starts to kick in. Just to finish this off, I'll use the Mood tool to pop on the LUT. There's one called Rosa, which I think really fits with the tone of this image. And I'll go ahead and add a glow effect. I'll crank this up but I'll also mask it with a radial gradient, squish it in a little and place it just over the brightest bits of the sunset. So only the area with the brighter sun is glowing in my image. And I'm actually going to go back to my sky tool and change the horizontal position so that really bright bits where the sun's at would be right behind the lighthouse for maximum drama. And now if we do a before and after, those are some great results in very little time. Another way I like to use the sky tool is as a quick fix for blown out skies just like this one. Again, it's not something we exactly hope for when we shoot, but to really quickly and easily bring some detail back, I'm going to choose myself a bright blue sky this time, and I've got three to choose from. I'm really liking this first one. I like that little line, that trail that's running across the sky. I'm also going to turn the relight strength all the way down to zero because it's less about tailoring the whole image to match the sky here. I'm just trying to add a sky back to the image. I'm going to head down to sky adjustments so I match the sky to the image better. I'll defocus it a little bit and I'm going to crank up the atmospheric haze quite high up with this because the image is not that contrasty to begin with. I'm going to increase the warmth a little because the image is quite warm. 
and I'll increase the brightness. And there is a quick, simple fix for a blown out sky. Motion blurred images happen to also be quick, simple fixes. It sounds crazy, but that's what it is in Luminar Neo. This photo of a toy shop I showed earlier, this is quite blurry, so there is a tool called Super Sharp, which I simply set to middle, and it takes a moment to do its thing, but I believe it's only when you leverage AI can this even be considered as something that's fixable. And that right there is an unblurred image. And if I just zoom in to the upper part of the image here and toggle Super Sharp on or off, it is quite mind boggling to think that the motion blur was not added in, the motion blur was taken away. Here's another photo which I was absolutely prepared for to notice some motion blur in. This shot was handheld, no stabilization on the camera nor the lens, and this was at an exposure time of 1 15th of a second. I probably would not have even attempted this shot if it weren't for the confidence that Super Sharp can fix this in post. The long exposure is, of course, to show the movement of this bike passing by. Though, if I start zooming into the background, you can most certainly see that the camera wasn't exactly still. So let's go ahead and run Super Sharp again. I'll do middle again. And it is simply astounding how well this works. If I go all the way into one of these flowers on the bush here and I toggle Super Sharp on and off again, the blurred out details look perfectly sharp. Now, there is one element in this photo that is meant to be blurry, and that's this bike whizzing by. You can see Super Sharp's been trying to fix that blurred out bike as well, but that's not what we want. So thankfully, there's masking built right within Super Sharp. It's right over here in the masking tab, and I'm just gonna grab a simple brush tool to paint over this bike here. What this has done now is apply Super Sharp to only the bike. So let's go over back and expand mask actions. I'll show you that mask. I'm gonna click invert. So what it's done now is apply Super Sharp to the entire image except the bike which we want blurred. Again, results in one click, but you control the way it turns out. I believe I was not alone at feeling a bit apprehensive when AI was first introduced to photo editing, but we've just gone over something which would not have been possible if not for AI. And there are other processes as well which fundamentally have not changed, just simplified from tedious things to trivial tasks in Luminar Neo. For example, the background in this portrait of myself. I think it's a bit too bright and I'm blending into it a little. If I want it to just darken the background, I could of course mask out the background and apply selective adjustments to it, but there's actually something better in Luminar Neo called Relight. And I'll actually jump on over to a different image to better demonstrate this for you. It lets you brighten or darken your image depending on depth. And it does a really good job of calculating that depth from just a 2D image. We also get a depth slider so we can change the threshold of what's considered near or far. So back to my studio portrait, if I wanted to darken my background, I could simply use a few sliders and achieve what traditionally would require some masking and quite a few layers. For portraits as well, there's also all these time-consuming local adjustments. We typically paint ourselves onto skin, eyes, teeth, and lips. Those are all streamlined into a list of sliders which pinpoint these areas for you automatically. You still have full control over the strength of each adjustment, but it's the convenience of having a single slider for shine removal, for example, and that's done. It's all the little things which otherwise would have been quite a bit more work and laying them out right before you. And more than just a time saver, Luminar Neo is, to me, a second chance at recreating my vision. It could be that scene which didn't turn out the way I hoped for, or just a careless mistake which resulted in a blurry photo. If you're interested to give your photos the Luminar Neo treatment, use the link in description and my limited time code ZY20 at checkout. Luminar Neo has raised the bar for what fixing it in post has meant to me, so I do recommend giving it a spin, and I hope to see you around. Thank you.